uh, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem, Rakakwadash. Shalom to the Lord's elect. Once again, it's another video. Now I'm going to be reacting to this video here that was put up by uh, Elder Karatza of uh, GMS Baltimore. That's his channel there, Biblical Defenders. The title of this video is Sakari, once again confounded by Christian Calvinists on the commandments. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The real question is, what is the nature of God? Because you guys aren't doing anything different than what the Roman Catholics are doing. You're not doing anything different than what the Muslims are doing. You're trying to hope that your good will outweigh your bad. That's all you're doing. You're hoping, you're keeping the law. That's what I've heard you tell people. Keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. Keep the commandments, keep the commandments. And that is, that is the problem. That's the problem, my friend. Please don't be deceived. Hold on. There's only two on, religions buddy. in this world. Hold on, buddy. You're either trying yeah, to get to the heavens or you're Come trusting right Christ. Okay. One of the two. Okay, so you now. You can't do both. So now, and watch all this. of you are trying to be good to get so, to so the now, So now, watch this. That's the essence Go ahead, of the read that. issue. 45 and 45. The issue isn't as as ethnicity. Hey, the issue is who is God. And God is holy. Yeah, but what are you doing to be justified before God? That's my question. I answered yours the best I can, but you won't answer mine. I'll answer right now. Get ready. So the uh, Edomite ask these guys, what are you doing to, to be justified before what he calls God, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Let me bring it back so you can hear it again. Hey, what's the truth? Who is God? And God is holy. Yeah, but what are you doing to be justified before God? That's my question. I answered yours the best I can, but you won't answer mine. I'll answer right now. Get Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. We can't be justified before God. We can't be justified before God. Absolutely not. Not by being good. Not Not by being good. Not Not by being good. Only by faith. We are Listen, we just read a scripture that says, In the Lord, all of the seed of Israel are... Well, how wish I said, None is good but the Father. Okay, and even at our best state, Solomon said it's all vanity. Man at his best state is all vanity. Okay, and when you go to the book of Isaiah 64 and 6, it says all our righteousness are as filthy rags. So the question is, who is justified before the Heavenly Father? Who's truly justified before the Heavenly Father in this generation? I'm going to give you the answer and the scripture. But let's keep listening. Can they be justified in glory? Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 13. Absolutely, and we're going to see what the elect are going to be doing. For not the hearers of the law are just you're before God. Hold on, let, no, listen to the Bible, go ahead. But the not doers of the law. Hold on, what? But the, the doers of the law. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Right. So it said that. So according to Sakari, the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, see, the problem with that is. For you to be justified by the law, you have to keep all the laws. And there are over 600 laws. Okay, if you go in the book of James, okay, James said it, we are indebted to do the whole law. Let's, let's find that scripture. Then I'm going to show you truly is justified and why they're justified before the Heavenly Father. It has nothing to do with the law, let me tell you. Okay, this is... Uh, James 2 and 10. These guys from Sakari, they should write the scripture down. James 2 and 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So you, you, you for you, if you're going to justify yourself by the law, you have to keep the whole law. That means over 600 laws you have to keep perfectly. All right? Because if you break one law, Right? You're guilty of breaking all of them. Okay? Now, this is Galatians 5 and 3. For I and I guess these guys just don't understand that. It doesn't resonate. And there's a reason for that, because they're not of the elect. Galatians 5 and 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, which goes back to the law, that he is a debtor, he's a debtor, to do the whole law. You know what? Let's get that in the... Um, Let's get that in the uh, NLT. Let's see what it says there. And then I want to go to the scripture that the Sakari guy pulled out. 
Galatians 5 and 3, let's read that. I'll say it again. These are the words of Apostle Paul, by the way, who was an expert in the law, okay? And even he discounted that. Okay, he said he conned that, but for, he conned that all down, but to win Yahweh Shai. He knew, he, he knew that the ministry went deeper than the law. You know, the, uh, it all goes back to having total faith in Yahweh Shai, okay? Now, Galatians 5 and 3, it says, I'll say it again, if you are trying to find favor with the Heavenly Father, or be justified, right, by being circumcised, as in the law, you must obey every regulation, every regulation, that means all the laws that were given to us by our forefather Moses. You must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses for you to be justified in the sight of the Heavenly Father. You have to keep all the laws, and it's simply impossible. It's virtually impossible. You can't do it, especially in sinful flesh and in the sinful kingdom. You cannot do it. It's impossible. So the big question is, who will be justified before the Heavenly Father? What's an example of being justified by the Heavenly Father? Being delivered from the coming destruction. Those that are going to be delivered from the coming destruction are justified by the Heavenly Father. So we got to find out who, who that crowd is, who that group is. Um, so let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to the video. So according to these guys, the doers of the law, so they pulled out that scripture for the Edomite, right? Romans, what is that? Romans 2 and 13. <clears throat> so the do, <clears throat> excuse me, the doers of the law shall be justified, right? That's what the scriptures say, right? Romans 2 and 13, let's read it. For not the hearers of the law are just before the heavenly father, but the doers of the law shall be justified, right? So case closed. Anyone who, mind you, to the, anyone that would be qualified to be called the doers of the law, they'd have to keep the whole law. This is, this is what the Sakari group uh, uh, fails to mention. That's, that's their oversight. Okay, You have to keep all the laws, and there are over 600 of them, to be justified before the Heavenly Father. And I just read you the scripture. Now, you know what cuts that? Them pulling out this scripture, uh, Romans 2 and 13, for not the hearers of the law are just, are just before the Heavenly Father, but the doers of the law shall be justified, right? So the, the same Apostle Paul who said that comes back and says this. Okay, let's read what he says here. No man is justified. Okay, it is right here. Now, we read the previous scripture was, the previous scripture was Romans 2 and 13. Let's read that one more time. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Heavenly Father, as in righteous, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And it's true, there's certain laws that we can do, but to be justified in the sight of the Heavenly Father, you have to keep all the laws. If you break one of the laws, you're, you're guilty of breaking all of them. We just read the scripture, right? So now, this is why the Apostle Paul came back and said this. Galatians 2 and 16. This time he's speaking to the Israelites in Galatia, right? The previous scripture he was speaking to the Israelites in Rome. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. <laughs> Knowing that... <laughs> A man is not justified by the works of the law. And that is so true when I show you who's justified and why they're justified. Okay, it has nothing to do with the law. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. But by the faith of Yahweh Shai, exactly. Totally believing in Yahweh Shai, man. And there's only one group that can do that. You know who that group is? Drum roll, please. The elect. The elect. The elect. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, who's he going to gather, huh? Matthew 24 and 30, he's going to gather the elect. All right? And the elect were chosen even before the earth was created. So it has nothing to do with works. It has nothing to do with the Lord. Simply because... 
They're justified before the Heavenly Father, the elect, simply because the, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, chose those spirits to be His. They're the first fruits of the nation of Israel. They're the first spirits created of their respective family lines, with Yahweh Shai being the first spirit of the first spirits created. That's why. It has nothing to do with the law. It has everything to do with predestination, predetermination by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. Now, how many of these Israelites can understand that? Again, Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Now, the Apostle Paul, the same Apostle Paul said that we established the law. I'm not saying not to keep the law. There's a scripture where it says the one, the one that keep the law shall live in them. The law, the law is, a, is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shai. The law is a good way to live. When the Lord said not to eat pork, there's, there's uh, common sense reasons why we shouldn't be eating pork. All kind of diseases come from pork. You've seen the pig eat. I've seen a pig. I remember in St. Lucia years ago, I seen a pig eat a cardboard box, man. What the hell am I doing putting that uh, flesh in, inside my body? Okay? Something that doesn't have enough sense not to eat a cardboard box. <laughs> okay? I've seen it. Okay? So there's certain... You, you go back to the dietary law, there's certain laws that the Heavenly Father give us and what to eat, it makes sense. We're not supposed to eat shrimp, rice. Why? Because shrimp is the garbage, the garbage, for lack of a better term, the garbage man of the sea, the shrimpers. Okay? Pigs are the garbage men of the earth. Okay? They eat all kinds of abomination. That's why you, you get these deadly diseases when you eat the pork, when you eat the shrimp. Okay? So the point I'm making to you is, there's laws that are just purely based on common sense, if you follow them. Not to commit adultery, okay? Not to commit adultery. Uh, adultery uh, brings forth uh, diseases, man. You get dead, deadly diseases from committing adultery, okay? So the point I'm making is there's, there's common sense uh, reasons why the Heavenly Father gave us these laws. You know, they work in tandem with our lives. You know, they enhance our life. And that's why when we go back to the kingdom, we're going to keep all the laws. Okay, the law is going to be in, in instituted within us. And that's um, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, the, the, what, what is called the new covenant. That's Ezekiel, the uh, 36th chapter. The Heavenly Father says he's going to program the law within our inward parts. And that begins with the elect. But going back to what the Apostle Paul said here, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai. Exactly. Even we have believed in Yahweh Shai, see, that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shai, not by the law, by the faith of Yahweh Shai. And it's no surprise that Sakari feels that way, that they, they, they feel they can be justified by the law, because beginning with their head leader, he doesn't believe in Yahweh Shai. He's the guy who made the statement. I'm talking about al Azar of that group. He's the guy who made the statement, Yahweh Shai don't need to be worshipped. Which is a terrible thing to say. After all what Yahweh Shai has done for this nation, what are you talking about? You don't need to be worshipped. The angels in heaven worshipped Yahweh Shai. You can find that out in Rome, um, the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter. It clearly says it. The 24 elders, they bowed before Yahweh Shai. All right? They said, you're worthy to take the book and open the seals. It's through Yahweh Shai we get this understanding of this knowledge is truth. He was the one, he was the only one worthy to open the seals. That means to explain the prophecies written in this book. That's why we have the understanding to this very day. It's because of Yahweh Shai. But you got this clown, al who made that statement. Now, I don't know if he still, he said that a few years ago. I don't know if he still believes that nonsense. But I wouldn't put it past him. Okay, he's not really into Yahweh Shai. Okay, and he shows it in his actions. So anyway, uh, Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai. There you go. This whole thing of ours is based on Yahweh Shai. It's all about Yahweh Shai. We're all trying to become like Yahweh Shai. That's the goal of this ministry. If you didn't know what the goal of this ministry is, now you do. We're all trying to become like Yahweh Shai. Those of us that have been called into this faith, we've been called into this faith to become like Yahweh Shai. Then we could be justified in the sight of Yahweh. 
To be justified in the sight of Yahweh, you have to become like Yahweh Shai. That's the goal, okay? Like when you play basketball, there's that net with the rim. That's the goal, right? And the object is to, is to put that ball through the hoop and, and, and score points, right? Thus you win the game, right? Well, there you go. Yahweh Shai is that net and that, and that rim and that hoop, okay? That's the goal. Yahweh Shai is the goal. I'm just using that as a metaphor. It says, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai, even we have believed in Yahweh Shai that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shai, not by the law and not by the works of the law. So that's a cold cut to those Sakari guys. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. The NLT has a way of, uh, uh, um, brings like a new, uh, kind of a, sometimes a broader perspective, you know, spicy pers uh, perspective. Let's see what it says. Galatians 2 and 16, NLT. Yet we know that a person is made right by the Heavenly Father by faith in Yahweh Shai. That's it, a mouthful right there. Not by obeying the law. Did you, did you brothers and sisters catch that? Are y'all listening? Did you catch that? Let me read that to you again. Galatians 2 and 16. Hey, I hope you Sakari guys are seeing this. Okay? Yet we know that a person is made right with Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, by faith in Yahweh Shai, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Yahweh Shai so that we might be made right with Yahweh. Because of our faith in Yahweh Shai. Not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will be, for no one will ever be made right with Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai by obeying the law. That's powerful. Let me read that one more time. Galatians 2 and 16. Yet we know that a person is made right with Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai by faith in Yahweh Shai not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Yahweh Shai so that we might be made right with Yahweh because of our faith in Yahweh Shai, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai by obeying the law. Also, that's a cold cut to, uh, to, um, to uh, IUIC because their whole, their whole strong point is the law the laws, the statutes, the commandments. Now, let's ask the well, let's answer the question, who is justified then? Because here in Romans 8, like I told you at the top of the lesson, I will show you who's justified in the sight of Yahweh. They're known as the elect. They're justified. Why are they justified? Because they can keep the law? No. Because they're experts of the law? No. They are justified because the Heavenly Father chose them from the beginning. Those were spirits chosen by the Heavenly Father from the beginning to be his, his, his uh, uh, prized possession. To be his prized possession, the elect. That's why. Okay, and we're going to read it. Romans, the 8th chapter. So you might say, well, how do I know I'm of the elect? Well, you don't. That's why the scriptures say we give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Let me put it to you this way. If you're diligently in the work and you're doing all that you have to do to be in this ministry, you, sometimes you're going above and beyond in your diligence, right? That's a good sign that you are of the elect. That's a good sign that even though we don't know for sure, there are signs that point to this guy got to be a member of the elect, okay? It's by our diligence, okay? Uh, diligence in the ministry. So this is Romans the eighth chapter, and uh, we'll start at the twenty-eighth verse. It says, "And we know that all things work together for them to work together for good to them that love the heavenly Father, to them who are the called according to His purpose." And that had nothing to do with the law. Okay, well, technically you could say it did because there's a, a, something called the law of the firstborn. 
That's the Most High's law. Okay, if you go in the book of uh, Exodus, which is a law, so I got to rephrase that. Exodus 13 and 2, here's the law. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, as in the first fruits, the church of the firstborn, and through this word, through this knowledge, right? Let's go to James 1 and 18. Through this knowledge, we're likened unto a firstborn. So those that receive this knowledge is truth, and they keep it all the way to the end. They hold fast to the faith, as it is written. That means that they were of the first spirits created. They were of the group called the church of the firstborn. That's the first spirits created in their respective family lines in the nation of Israel. James 1 and 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that's this knowledge, this truth, that we should be kind of a first fruits of his creatures. See that? Again, when I say it had nothing to do with the law, as in the, the you know, the, uh, the carnal ordinances to become, as, you, as they say, to become, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To become justified in the sight of the Heavenly Father. It had nothing to do with that. Okay, but technically, you could say when you go back to the law of the firstborn, it has everything to do with the law of the firstborn. That's the law of the firstborn back in Exodus 13 and 2. Let's go back to Exodus 13 and 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. It's my prized possession. So, technically, you can say. The elect have been chosen going back to the law of the firstborn. All right? And the firstborn, they get everything. They get the whole inheritance. Yahweh Shai is proof of that. He's the firstborn of the firstborn. Okay? Let's go back to James 1 and 18 again. Of his own will, he, of his own will, whose will? The will of the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. That's this knowledge that we should be a kind of first fruits of, of his creatures. So if we hold on to this knowledge all the way to the end, when Yahweh Shai comes, that means we were the first fruits of his cre cre uh, creatures. We were the first spirits created. That's what that means. First fruits mean the first spirits created. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, as in the creation of the nation of Israel, became his prized possession. See that? So the, the prized possession of the Heavenly Father is the first fruits. Now when you look up this word first fruits, it goes even deeper. First fruits. A parquet is the Greek. We're going to go into the Greek. A parquet. Strong's G, 536. A parquet. A parquet. Aparche, right? Let's look at the uh, definition here. To take away the first fruits of the productions of the earth. And that does go back to a law. The law of the first fruits. Like when you, whenever you sacrifice something, you always sacrifice the first, which is the best. Usually the best. You sacrifice the first of your, your, your flock, the first of your fruits, you know, etc., etc. Okay? So it says... To take away the first fruits of the productions of the earth, which was offered to the Heavenly Father. So of all the spirits the Heavenly Father created, there's a group of spirits the Heavenly Father separated for himself. That's his prized possession. And that's usually the first fruits that he created. Okay? So, um, which is the first spirits he created. The first portion of the dough from which sacred, lays, from which sacred loaves were, were to be prepared. Hence term used of persons consecrated to the Heavenly Father for all time. So guess what? Those individuals, those persons, which is another title for the elect, another title for the first fruits, they can never fall out the truth. Because that's their inheritance. Their inheritance is the truth. So they can never fall out of the truth. As being members of the first fruits, the church of the firstborn, the first spirits created, the elect. Okay? Let's read the next one. Person superior. So now this shows you right there. Not every Israelite is on the same level. Not every Israelite is part of the first fruits. Okay. Uh, among the nation of Israel. You have the first fruits. Among the nation of Israel. They're special. They're on a whole nother level. 
Okay, they, they're the heavenly father, Yahweh's prized possession. Even though the whole nation is his prized possession, there's a prized possession out of the prized possession. How about that? Okay? <laughs> Person superior in excellence to others of the same class, as in the same nation. So you got ones that are superior in excellence. That's the elect. The church of the firstborn, the first fruits, the first spirits created of their respective family lines within the nation of Israel. Okay? They're the ones that's justified before the Heavenly Father. It had nothing to do with the law, all right? If, in, if, if only the uh, law of the firstborn. That's it. it had no, in other words, it had nothing to do with what they did. Okay? That's what I mean when I say it had nothing to do with the law. It has nothing to do with the carnal ordinances of the law. Something that they did. No. It has everything to do with the Heavenly Father choosing them even before the earth was created. As the scripture have told us. The elect was, never forget that, the elect was chosen even before the earth was created. Okay? Matter of fact, uh, let's go to Ephesians. I think that's in Ephesians, the first chapter. Okay? Ephesians, the first chapter. Let me see if I can find a verse for you. Yep, Ephesians, the first chapter, the third verse. Blessed be the power and Father, Yahweh, and of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai. That's one of the blessings of being the elect, being the Heavenly Father's prized possession, right? According as he hath chosen us in him. Let's see, did he choose us in him because of our works, because we obeyed the law? Let's see. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, before the world was created, we we're already chosen, man. And I say we, hoping that I'm a member of that elect, that church of the firstborn. Even before the earth was created, the elect have already been chosen. The, the elect have already been justified. Like what the Sakari guy was saying when he read that scripture, right? Romans 2 and 13, which you could easily cut him with what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians. See? We, look, the elect was justified in the sight of the Heavenly Father long before the earth was created. So everything is predestinated. Okay, the scriptures speak about predestination. According as he hath chosen us, in him before the foundation of the world, predestination, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yeah, that's the elect. That's the church of the firstborn, the first fruits, the first spirits created, his prized possession. Okay? Having predestinated us, so it has nothing to do with the law or the works that they did. It has nothing to do with it. So why do these Israelites keep boasting on the law? And many of them can't even keep the law. Okay, <laughs> they are not knowing the scriptures. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai. Yeah, Yahweh Shai was the one who counted it off. As the song said, set it off. It was set off by Yahweh Shai, the head of the church of the firstborn, the head of the first fruits, the first fruit of the first fruits created. How powerful is that, man? That's Yahweh Shai. That's why he got everything. Okay, he was the very first spirit created, period. Okay, having predestinated us unto the adoption of Yahweh Shai, uh, I'm sorry, the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai to himself, to himself, to the Heavenly Father Yahweh, to Yahweh Shai, according to the good pleasure of his will, according to the good pleasure of his will, had nothing to do with what we did as in obeying the law. Can you see that? Okay, <laughs> so having read that, let's go back to. And we just read the law, right? Exodus 13 and 2. Let's go back to uh, Romans 8 because it's going to clearly tell you who's justified. All right? This is, a script, this is a scripture that I told you about at the top of the lesson that I have to, to, to uh, share with you. And it's my response to what the Sakari guy said. Romans 8 and 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the heavenly father right and we know that all things work together for for good to them that love the heavenly father to them who are the called according to his purpose okay that's the church of the firstborn the first fruits 
for whom he did foreknow, whom he did foreknow, as in their spirits, he did, look, the Lord told Jeremiah, wait a minute, let's, let's bring some understanding to that. Jeremiah, the first chapter, what did the Lord tell Jeremiah? Before I formed you in the belly, Jeremiah, I knew you. Did not the Lord say that to Jeremiah? Here it is right here. Jeremiah 1 and 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. This is the Heavenly Father speaking to Jeremiah. He said, look, before I put you in the flesh, put your spirit in the flesh, I knew you. What did he know? His spirit. Remember, the Heavenly Father, one of his titles is the Father of Spirits. And he knows every spirit that he's created. Everyone. Every last spirit. He knows every last spirit he has created. The Heavenly Father does. Yahweh. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, before you were even born, Jeremiah, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So it had nothing to do with the works that Jeremiah did. No, absolutely nothing. It has everything to do with the Heavenly Father choosing him, even before he was born, meaning his spirit, and predestinating him to do what he had to do, which is to become a prophet. Now, how many of these Israelites... Don't understand that. All right? The, the reason why we do what we do, because we were predestined to do it. Okay? Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You see that? So let's go back to Romans 8. So now you should be able to understand this even clearer now, using the uh, analogy of uh, uh, Jeremiah, using that as an example. Okay? Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow, like Jeremiah, he also did predestinate it, or predestinate. Jeremiah was predestinated to be a prophet. That's why he became a prophet. It wasn't because of what he did. It wasn't because of his, of his works or his belief. No, he was predestinated to be a prophet. For whom he did foreknow, he did also, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. What did I tell you at the beginning? This thing of ours is all about becoming like Yahweh Shai. Okay? That he might be the firstborn, the church of the firstborn, the first fruits, the first spirits, the most high's prized possession. Remember that? A parquet. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see how, how much of a prized possession the elect is? The elect? They truly are the chosen ones, man. The elect of the nation of Israel. The church of the firstborn, the first fruits, which is a small number in comparison to the nation. They're the most precious of all Israelites, man. <laughs> uh, and they're the ones that are truly justified before the Heavenly Father in this generation, the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Okay, let's keep reading. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, here it is. Drum roll, please. Them he also justified. Them he also justified. So who are the ones that are justified in this generation in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai? The elect, the church of the firstborn, the first fruits, period, point blank, end of story. Okay, anybody who's saying anything different, they are not knowing the scriptures. Okay, moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And indeed, the, the elect will be glorified. It's going to start with deliverance. Then their bodies are going to be changed. Right? Then they're going to receive a crown on their head. You think every Israelite's going to receive a crown on his head? Ezra didn't see that. Ezra saw the men that stood so stiffly for Yahweh Bashim Yahshai receiving crowns on their heads. That's the Most High's prized possession. You see? It's all about the elect. Those are the ones that are truly justified. And by the way, the elect are the only ones that will really understand this Bible. Really put the puzzle together. Okay? Because the scriptures, again, was given unto them. The, they, they got the whole... They got the whole nine, man. The, the faith, the understanding, you name it. They got it. Why? Because they are the elect. They are the church of the firstborn. They're the first fruits created. And it goes back to the law. Exodus 13 and 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn of the nation of Israel whatsoever openeth 
the womb of man and beast, it is mine. You think that's a joke? You think the Heavenly Father was playing a game when he, when he put down that law? No, man, it's deadly serious. It's all about the elect. Okay? So I'm going to end it there. Those are the ones that are justified, truly, the elect. No one else. Matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai comes, who is he going to gather, huh? Let's read it. Can you see why when Yahweh Shai comes, the ones he's going to gather is the elect from the four corners of the earth? That's the Heavenly Father's prized possession. Okay? The elect, they got, their bodies got to be changed. Okay? They got to receive crowns on their heads. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go. Matthew 24 and, uh, what is it? Matthew 24 and 30. Let's find out who the Lord's going to deliver, huh? Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's Yahweh Shai. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. There you go. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, the church of the firstborn, the first fruits. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. There you go. And the elect are scattered all over the world. But the majority of the elect are scattered right here in America. Okay, the greatest deliverance is going to take place right here of the elect, the church of the firstborn. All right, so on, on that note, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you're edified. On to the next.